So we're back now to start getting some graft done. We're gonna get some lights in here, some temporary lighting so that when we do come over here, I plan to work in the evening time. So one thing would be very handy to be able to hook a generator up here and have some temporary lighting throughout the house that you're fit to work, even when it does get dark. Just gonna attach some of these drop down lights. I have a load of them from my own house. My wife changed out some of the lights. No, sorry, I changed them for. She picked them, um, but I have loads of these spare, so I'm gonna use them. There's a lot of wind. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. And that wind actually doesn't do any harm to a house. It's keeping the house dry inside. I'll just get rid of all this old junk here. I'm going to about hang out of the walls. Don't need it anymore. So I'm going to take this across here. I'm going to stick a little junction box here. And we'll take our power to that. Right, so we're plowing on nicely here now. Um, so we have a light here in our reception room where you get your champagne when you come in here. Uh, you might notice these little things here. They're like a little staple with a plastic head on them. And um, you'll see me fire them in with a gun here. It's a great little yoke because it doesn't pinch on the wire at all. And it just it'll put it into very, very awkward places for you. And just like that there, run into a junction box. And over here, the same. Uh, Toolfix, who are based in Dundalk and County Loud, sent this out to us to give it a go and see what I think of it. So it's an M12 BCTS is the model. Uh, 12 volt M12. So I had the batteries at home already. Another thing I needed to buy was a few of these. I bought a few boxes of these. And that's them there. Just little steel pins with a plastic insulator on it just so it doesn't pinch the wire. I have to say I'm liking it. It's making this job so much easier because if I had to hammer that roof, hammer in little pegs into it, it probably the lot of dust would come down and maybe the roof would fall down too. So a huge thanks to Toolfix for sending that out to us and um, to give it a go. I'm liking it so far. Time will tell when we use it a bit. Go and check them out yourself. I'll put a link in the description for this and for the store for sending this out to us. And they are today's sponsors. There's a nice piece of copper pipe running through here. We can get it out. Put a wire in there instead. Oh, eventually. We feed this through without going round the frame. Tidy up. One thing I am sick of looking at is this. There's nothing pleasurable about looking at that. Big pile of
going to put one of these outside that can just plug the generator into. Uh, no rooting around with wires through doors and things. Plug it in out here and that will power the house. Right, so I bought this type of silicone only here a short while ago and for some reason it seems to me like it's gone off yeah that's gone off I managed to race home and I had a half a tub of this stuff here which is kind of like a, an adhesive and sealant all in one put that around the edge here So that's that done, that'll be our main input power source there now. It's up high, keeps it away from the ground, if anything hitting it on the ground. And that's the reason why we wanted to keep it high. I missed the noise of them switches. We used to have them at home, and you can just remember that clicking noise. That's showing me age now. Anyway, that job is complete. Now the next thing I want to look at is doors. There's a wind blowing through this house that's outrageous. At the minute, we have these old rotten frame here. And there was an old timber door here. I don't actually know where it went. It was here. But there was an old door here that was completely collapsed. Um, but this old frame is rotten as well. So we're just going to rip down this whole frame. I have picked up a couple of doors. And I'm hoping that they'll fit without too much hassle. It just goes to show where some of these... Houses were built, it was just built cheaply. Um, this timber frame here at the top, uh, well you have what looks to be a 4x3 here, and that is actually built into the blocks. That's what they must have used for a lintel and then just built on top of it. It lasted a right while, but it's completely yet away with woodworm, so don't worry, it's coming out anyway. But it just goes to show there probably is no lintel above this. I pretty much believe there's not. So it's just lucky that there's not much above it. I'll have to go home and get a saw and cut that piece out completely. But another thing we can do is we have to remove these bites on both sides. I can see very little. It's so humid and so wet that the glasses steam up and you can see nothing. Uh, patience kind of <coughs> started a war with a tin and hit a couple of wraps this one with a sledgehammer and we knocked a big lump out of there I didn't mean to knock as much but I can fill that with concrete very very easily I'll be tidying up our concrete anyway when I get the door in and um, so what I need to do now is the door that I bought is in here I have two of them bought second-hand doors here's the two of them here so I've measured this one and what I found is that door is an inch taller width wise it's just perfect it Probably will have to pair a wee bit off here. I hope not too much to get the slide in. I'm not cutting anything off the door. There is room to take a little bit off and I'm not doing that because when these doors have done the job here, I'm gonna use them more permanently at home on a shed that I'm building. So I will reuse them. I do not wanna damage the doors. I just want them in here temporarily to seal this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go upwards because above here, I don't want to be tampering with it at all. I don't really wanna to touch that. But what I can do is, I can go downwards. 
can I can go down an inch there comfortably and it's not gonna do one ounce of harm. The door will have plenty of room to open um, and won't rub the ground hopefully. So that's the kind of plan that I have in my head. Let's tear into it. Get rid of these nails for starters. Oh, a battery would help. We have that dug out. I didn't mean for this to break off, but it's very, very light uh, concrete. I see the ivy coming underneath it and pushing up from underneath. So the rest was pretty solid, but it did shatter across there. But I'll fix that. I'm going to fix all of this and tidy it up before we're done. I want to first make sure that this is actually the right one. This is the wrong door. There's some old fittings here, still on this door. So let's cut all them off. I'll use the a grinder for now and I'll be able to tap them through then when we get the door set right. The door's sitting lovely on this side. It will pull in there and I'll fit to bolt it in. That all will pull in. But we problem on this side, it's not that it's tight, it will push in. But there's a bit of plaster here. See that wee layer of stuff there? I just need to tip that off now with a chisel. Just from there to there and this part of the door will all push in. Right, so I'll just hook the door off, make it much easier to put on the frame. Um, so I'll go around now and I'll drill a few holes. There should be holes here, there is. And see, can I get them buys out? And if I can, I'll just drill straight through. So we're going to use these frame fixers here, and then we're going to use these T30s to drive them in. These can go straight into a concrete block or solid concrete as long as you drill a pilot hole first. Alright, we don't want to tighten it too much, we want to just keep our door from twisting, so we'll check our levels before we drive anything home. We'll put a couple of props behind then that we can pull into, just make sure the door's alright. Well, bang on level wise. Alright, 
Let's see what we're like now. Oh, very close. Very close. So I think at home we may have something that goes here to cover that in as well. I would have loved to hadn't got that, because I'm not a cat person, to be straight with you. And my dog would never fit in there. Well, he'd try, more than likely, but these doors came from a local man beside us. We're very fortunate to get them because he had very few left. Um, his son and me were very good friends at school, and he walks over in England, working on a housing estate or whatever, and they got a heap of these doors taken out. And he shipped them home, and his father to sell them. And when I left, there was very few left, but it was nice to get them, the good doors. We'll solve that, hopefully, before the video ends, and put a set of latches on there, but that's not the end of the world. It's a door on. And with that said, this door here is the next one we're going to tackle. We are going to have to remove our lucky shoe. We'll be very careful in doing so because there's not much left of it. But superstitions or not, we will put it back. Um, but for now, we need to knock this door out and get it ready for the next door. Right, so that came out handy enough. There's an interesting thing, this has nothing to do with the door I'm after taking out, but it's the same as the other one, it's got these little spikes sticking up, so anyone can say why these were in, or what the idea of those little spikes was. Um, there's none on the top, so what were the four? Were the four holding the door of some sort, or what's the reason for that? I'm not going to take all of this out, I'm just going to cut it across here, and hopefully it won't break out, which no my luck it probably will but i'm going to cut as much of it as i can on both sides just enough to let the door sit because the door is going to sit on this not down there and uh, this door is smaller um so i am going to have to probably run timber on one side of it and um, to fill in we'll see what way it works out or pack it with concrete but let's get it anyway yeah she's quite a bit smaller <laughs> by the way you might wonder what the sticks is in the corner it's not the Blair Witch or anything, it's uh, my sister. She's out for a walk on this road at times, and it's a lovely, quiet little road, and sometimes she just gets little bits of timber like this, lets them sit in here to dry out, and takes them home then, for just for lighting the fire. That's all it is. Right, so what I need to do is I need to cut this right back flush here. Just take that little square out, just enough for the thickness of this door to fit right in that it sits level with flush with the bottom of this, and that should be good. <laughs> mechanism in this door is very rusty and that's actually what's stopping it from closing so if I just push the latch in by my hand get it there now there it is see so it's just a mechanism that's rusty I'll have to put a bit of oil on those things but when it is in it does open and close like it should
so that's all we need to do there. Just leave that now because if, if you were tempted to keep on filling there, what'll happen is, well, it's a good chance a lot of your cement will fall back out again. So just build it up bit by bit. I mixed a good strong mix there. So that'll go off in a couple of hours. I'll come back then and I'll put another layer on top of that and that should finish that up. I've added some steel nails. I need to fill this up, but it, once again, like inside, don't fill it all up at once. I'm just gonna put a small bit in for now and then let it set and then come back and top it up again. Also, another thing is make sure you wet your surface that you're gonna be working on because the block itself will soak all the moisture out of the cement you just put in and crack open. So make sure you wet it. Another good thing that I've used here is a thing called PVA Bond. That'll also help it to stick. So we have to take a break. This is starting to team rain again. We're supposed to be actually in good weather now for the first time since the middle of June. But as you can see there, I think some parts down the country, Northern Ireland's experiencing good weather. I'm glad to hear it because at least somebody's getting it. We're not getting it here and you can see it's extremely dark outside. And it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. It's very, very dark. But as you can hear here, it's teeming now. And I hoped it wouldn't do that because the cement now that I put in is going to get soaking wet. And that is really not what I wanted. I've just after finishing doing around this door. And now you can see. Yeah. But you can see what I done here last night. Came back over after making. And I put a frame around, timber frame around the door. So that I could pack the whole outsides around the door with cement from the outside. And just seal it up. I think when it's finished it'll look an awful lot better than now expanding foam which doesn't really hold anything good for insulation and that's about it but it looked quite ugly on the outside and you'd have that much foam on the outside to be able to be seen and I just thought this was the best way of doing it. So we went this shower out and hopefully we're fit to get back to it. All right so we have our doors now done. So what I've done to finish off around the edges was just use a sponge float but just looks an awful lot better when it's put in like that. It's not permanent so I don't have to go over on a board, but just enough to leave the door that it's, well, it looks like it's in right. And I'm not finished on this one yet, but the rain seems to be persistent now, God, so I may have to come back to it later on the night or tomorrow. But we have this all filled in now, the whole way up along there, the whole top is filled in as well. And um, here I've started filling in, coming up, I'm just doing it roughly because I have to fill this in as well. And you don't want to be packing it too much because it'll end up falling out. So again, it'll be coming back later on this evening when this is dried out a bit, or maybe even tomorrow, and just finish that off. I also have to fill in that hole there as well. But you can get the general idea. The door is in, and it'll look a hell of a lot better with doors on it. So I thought handles would have came for it today, but there's a local guy that's coming to replace a pin of glass in my own house, and he just carried these handles with him, and he wants to get a look on at these to make sure he has the right handles in the van. So he's not able to come for a couple of days, so the handles will be going on it. Probably the next time you see it, There'll be handles, locks, everything fit onto these doors. We'll put the layer box cap on it here as well. We'll just tidy the whole thing up and just clean it. But apart from all that, we have an open and closing door now that we can lock eventually once that's sorted. All right, we're back over and I've got the generator in the back of the trailer. I'm just after making up a lead, go from one place to the other. Do a wee bit of a choke here. We can start her up. I have got good news because I just looked through the window there, I couldn't help it. <laughs> and I see lights, I see lights. That's the first light in this house since 85, I'd say. Now it is flashing because these are energy saving bulbs. They will heat up over time and the flashing might stop. If it doesn't, we'll swap them out for an LED equivalent or the old style bulbs. But no, it's getting brighter. When I come in here, we have lights there, we have lights here. We've lights here, and we've lights there. So we've lights all around. So now I can just turn the power off here. And that's it, no power's coming through. Not that you need it, but just look at it's there. We're back on, and we've got our lights throughout the place. I don't know what it is, 
It's just temporary light, but it makes you very excited. I don't know, I feel like a child in a Thai store. And I can't for the life of me understand why, but it has put a hell of a smile on my face. That is the first time this house has had lights in it, had some power running through it, even it is temporary. Since 1985, nearly 40 years. And it's lovely to bring it back into it, even if it is flickering. But it's nice to bring light back into a house that hasn't seen it in so long, and has been in the darkness for so long. And I'm sure people that are past and present that would have lived in this house at some stage, or passed through it, would equally appreciate seeing a bit of light in it. And those kind of things, they're important. What I am going to do, whether it's on camera or not, we'll see, is I'm going to put a light right there because I have the second switch which is wired and ready for power and then put another one there and possibly one on the other side of the house as well or just if you do come over here in the evening and want to do a bit of work it'd be nice to have the option of having lights outside I'm gonna head home I'm gonna start something else which if you're not from a farming background if you only came here for the cottage well then you probably have no interest but to the farming people I'm going to be starting to get fertilizer on my silage fields we're three weeks behind now hard to believe but we are going to be at this over the weekend i'm not going to be using a tractor because there's not a hope of getting in here with a tractor the fields are drenched so it's all going to be done with a quad for the first time ever on our farm quad is going to have to do every single thing so we do have the lend of a spreader which is going to hopefully allow us to do that one thing i will say is you never know how your week is going to start Today is Friday and our week is hopefully going to pan out okay now when the weather starts to pick up. But Monday left an ambulance outside our house picking up my dad, who fortunately had a bit of a fall and broke a bone. And he is now in hospital recovering from that. He's in a brace. He's not happy about being in a brace, but he is happy actually been in hospital for some apparent reason. Um, he rings me twice a day to check to see have I the cows out or have I fertilizer sown, just checking up on me all the time. That never leaves you, even going on 92 years of age. But yeah, he's enjoying his time over there. Apparently, he has two other men in the ward with him. And they're talking about farming nearly all the time. And he's in his element. But it just goes to show, although your week can start sometimes bad, it can end good. But anyway, let's go and do something else. <laughs> 